For today's quiz, we have five metal balls, ball bearings made out of hardened steel. What we're gonna use is this wooden track. It's cut symmetrically, so a mirror image on one side versus the other. This height is equal to that height. This is a level surface. If I were to take this ball up here and then release it and let it hit with these other four spheres, what will happen? That's our quiz for today. It looks something like this. And be as specific as you can in your answer. And as always, mark why you think whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen, and list your confidence. All right, let's go over a few typical student responses. In fact, there's one response that's overwhelming. Most students will say when the one ball comes in, this other ball will shoot out. They said, or they'll say that they've already seen this before in the form of a Newton's cradle. We've all seen five hanging spheres where they'll hit into each other and one will come out. And they'll equate this as being the same thing. And that's a really good idea. But as we're gonna find out, it might not be so simple. So let's go into the explanation. Whenever we have one ball coming down here, we're gonna end up having it strike this ball, which will strike this ball, which will strike this ball, which will strike this ball. It is true that the one will come out. And in another video we have why that's so, why two don't come out and so on. But let's just assume that one will come out. The problem is, is where does it end up? And so we can ask uh, students, you know, to be pushed a little further and say, all right, if this ball starts up here, when the other ball gets uh, knocked out, where, where will it end on this ramp? Most will say, well, it should end all the way up here. And so that's a pretty good um, call but as we're gonna see, it doesn't actually make it there. Let's watch. So I'll let this one go, and we'll see that it only goes about halfway, you know, maybe in terms of height and distance. So it's not like a Newton's Cradle. A Newton's Cradle will go on for, I don't know, a minute. There are many, many hits. This does not. This will only give us one hit, two hit, three, four, five, six, and then that's it. That's it. Why? Well, there's a few things that are happening here. First of all, when this ball comes down, there is friction. This isn't like uh, Newton's cradle where it just is flying through the air. This is experiencing friction from this bottom piece of wood. That's not bad. It's just causing it not to slide, but rather to roll. And rolling is different than either sliding or coasting through the air. Another problem is when, whenever this ball hits here, Notice this one's going to be rolling when it's rolling in one direction. So this ball is rolling down the ramp in this direction. When it strikes another ball, think of the balls as being gears instead. I could have used um, gears that have teeth. When they hit one another, they'll interact. When they hit, they're going to end up trying to force this other ball, this second one, to rotate in this manner. Do you see how that happens? As they hit, this one is rotating one way it's gonna to try to cause this second ball to rotate another way. So this ball is rolling down, hits this ball, and it's trying to cause this ball to rotate in the direction that would make it go up the ramp. It's not gonna go up the ramp, as we've already seen. This has a lot of force that it's transferring to the second ball. It's also got momentum from the hit, and it's gonna end up going in that direction. But this ball does wanna rotate in that direction as it's being pushed over. It's eventually gonna, let's just look at the second ball, it's eventually now gonna scrub off some of its speed as it tries to rotate in that direction. Again, we're gonna end up storing some of that energy in rotational motion, and that goes on and on for each one of these balls. And that explains why we end up with such an anemic hit here. Up, losing, losing, and I'm done. And so it's that kind of analysis that this is really the world of engineers. Engineers often take that idealized case where something is swinging in the air and say, okay, 
Now let's factor in all these little problems that might end up stealing some of our energy, our efficiency, or so on. This would also be a really nice uh, long-term project, like how does the number of balls or number of spheres influence that efficiency? Is there a certain number where it wouldn't even bounce off? And if I decrease the number, would I get maybe a higher elevation on that first ball that came up? So um, hopefully that sparks some ideas and that's your quiz for today.